Hi everyone and welcome back to our combat scenario tutorial series. In the last episode we set up the concept of stages within our combat director. So in this episode we want to show you how to use our stages by spawning in new enemies. So let's jump in and take a look at spawning these guys in. So to create our spawner we're going to create a new actor. And we'll call it BP Spawner. And on here, we're just going to have a box collision. And this box collision can act as sort of the locator for where things should spawn in. So it randomize which place it's going to spawn in that, in that box. So for this to work, we're going to go to the event graph. Or you can do it as a function, either way. In this case, it doesn't really matter too much. We're going to do a custom event and do spawn enemy. Add input for this, and that'll be the NPC class type. So make sure you choose class reference instead. And the reason why you want class reference is because you're referring to something that has yet to be spawned in. We're going to spawn it in. So we need to know the class reference for spawning it. NPC. So now I can do spawn actor from class, choose that NPC, and the spawn transform is based upon our box here. So I'm going to take the box and I'm going to get the, uh, not get, sorry, just do random, no, get bounds, sorry. There we go, get bounds, get uh, bounds. So now if I search for um, just the word random point in bounding box, is, we can now get the center and the half size, which the origin is the center and the box extent is the half size. So a little tip, if you ever see extent, that normally means half size. So just bear that in mind. So it's going to get a random point inside that box. And then with this random point, we can project that down into the navigation system. So it'll find it on navigation map so it can actually walk around. And the query extent here, we can just move it in the box extent down to there. Okay, so the spawn transform, we're going to split this and give it the projected location as the location. The transform is going to be the rotation of the box. So I'm going to get the box and we'll do rotation. You want to get the world rotation. Make it match that. And the scale wave is 111. And in collision handling override, we want to always spawn always spawn but try to adjust location so try to adjust location but always spawn when we spawn the enemy we need to tell it to activate its ai straight away so we can do spawn default controller and then we want to add this to the combat director so this spawner needs to know which combat director it should be associated with so for that to work we need to have a reference to our combat director so add a variable combat director and search for your combat director and you'll make that instance editable dragging this out now we can now get that enemy list get enemy actors and we can add a unique one to it but the problem we have here is we have to add to it and we need to bind to it so what we're going to do is make a function to handle this part for us on the combat director so let's make a function and do add enemy here. And the input wise, we're going to have a reference to the NPC. We're going to drag out our enemy actors, add unique. And we have to set up that binding. So bind event on character death. And we'll do create event and we'll choose the on enemy death. Okay, good. So if I go back to my spawner, rather than doing it here, I'll take my combat director reference and do add enemy. Which is of course going to ask for which enemy to use. Okay, compile, save that. 
So let's go back to our map and let's add a spawner into our scene here. So I'm going to just put one over here somewhere and we'll take it around and I set the box and I'm going to change the extensity of the box to be a little bit wider like that. Okay. So I want it to use that spawner to spawn in the next enemy. So if I go to level blueprint on combat stage director, uh, combat director, sorry, stages when it ends, I want to know what stage has ended. So we use a switch for this. I'm going to add the pins for this. So when stage one has ended, I want it to spawn in a new enemy. So we're going to get our reference to our spawner and we're going to do spawn enemy. And it's going to ask us for what class we want to use. In this case, just NPC. Now, if you want to spawn in multiple enemies, this is where you put in like a for loop to mul multiply how many times you're doing this. But that's going to go in and do spawn enemy when we detect that combat stage has ended for stage one. I want to make sure then on my combat director. So if I select the combat director. Yes, get up like this. There you go. Um, I want to make sure that the stages, there's a second one for the stage to go on to. So I'm going to add another one, stage two. And this one will be a timed remaining uh, on this combat stage. And we'll do timed every, after five seconds to spawn in the next enemy. And then we'll do enemy count zero for the end of the combat scenario. So hit play. Combat scenario has started. And in five seconds, we should see another enemy spawn in. There he is. And now the door won't disappear until I complete the scenario. So I've got to kill those. There you go. And that's how we're using those stages there. At the moment, combat director here is blank. And that is silly because I forgot to link it up here. So I'm going to set up the combat director with this one. Obviously, it's best to name these things as your levels get quite large. You want to make sure that you're taking account of what should be called when and where. So even if I kill this one first, that one won't open until the next stage has ended. There we go. So now you see how we can set up spawners and make it work for our stages. And in the next episode of the Combat Scenario series, we're going to go through and set up the actual scenario, what we want to happen. So in that case, we want it to spawn enemies in through a door at the top. So when the door opens, more enemies will spawn in. And then we want the uh, another stage when another door opens, uh, maybe one where they propel down from a helicopter or quick a cutscene. And we really want to take this chance to stress and put pressure on this system to make sure we've got all the things worked out. And this is what you want to do when you're working on any mechanic is sort of just put it through the paces, see if it works for every sort of scenario that you may have in your game to before you're happy to part, start building upon it inside your content. And if you want to watch that next episode right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can find that episode plus many more from just $1 a month to get early access. Thank you to all the patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. If you like this video, make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye, everyone.